the Apollo 11 with all going well, astronauts Armstrong, Collins, and Aldrin sitting there atop the uh, great Saturn rocket in their command module getting ready for launch. Here's Jack King and launch control. Counting. Skip Chauvin informing the astronauts that the swing arm are now coming back. The astronauts will have a few more reports coming up in the countdown. The last business report will be from Neil Armstrong at the 45 second mark in the count when he gives the status on the final alignment of the stabilization and control system. We're now passing the four minute 30 second mark in the countdown, still go at this time. Four minutes, 15 seconds, the test supervisor now has informed launch vehicle test conductor Norm Carlson, you are go, go for launch. From this time down, uh, Carlson uh, handles the countdown as the launch vehicle uh, begins to build up. We're now hitting the four minute mark. Four, minute mar four minutes and counting, we are go for Apollo 11. We'll go on an automatic sequence uh, starting at three minutes and seven seconds. The astronaut, uh, the uh, engines that uh, generate that thrust uh, uh, combine horsepower equal to 543 uh, jet fighter planes. Their launch uh, vehicle there weighs as much as the submarine Nautilus. They burn 5,662,000 pounds of fuel, the equivalent of 98 railroad tank cars of it, the capacity of a small town's water tank. Lift off, the noise reaches 120 decibels and has been compared to 8 million high fi sets playing. T-minus one minute, 54 seconds and counting. Our status board indicates that the oxidizer tanks in the second and third stages now have pressurized. We continue to build up pressure in all three stages. Uh, here at the last minute, uh, we prepare it for the T-minus one minute, 35 seconds.
Houston, level front arm at 8 plus 17. Uh, outboard cut off at 9 plus 11. They've got it. What did you say was jumping around there, uh, Molly? So, something like gauges are jumping around. I'm not sure what the Level six arm is. is the sequence that uh, arranges the staging between the second stage and the third stage. Fuel uncovers uh, a sensor starting that sequence. I'm sure it's not uh, of major significance other than the fact Predicting that will be uncovered. Hey, we've got two minutes, seven or eight seconds. We've got to look at the... Uh, nine minutes, 11 seconds on this. And a minute, I look at the empty launch pad with some of those uh, 325,000 gallons of water that pour over it to the cool it. So good is this deluge system. Downrange 530 miles. So complicated. Altitude 95 miles. Velocity 17,000. 358 feet per second. That uh, it's uh, capable of uh, keeping the damage to a minimum on the pad, and they can turn around and use those uh, service module, the service uh, uh, stands almost instantly. Yes, it's uh, quite, a, quite a change. We used to take quite a while to repair the pads. Down the ground track, still go at 7 minutes 41 seconds. We'll miss the first of the burn. Roger, we confirm. Inboard engines are out on the second stage as planned. Looks like another perfect Saturn V launch. What a feat they've uh, come to with these Saturns uh, after the early days of Mercury and uh, and uh, even Gemini. But this, these Saturn's on-time launches, uh, uh, I wish we could get American railroads to run on the kind of schedule that uh, Von Braun, Devis, and company have got these Apollos launched on. <laughs> You know what uh, is amazing is the fact that we finally have man-rated boosters here. Uh, we borrowed uh, those. Uh, 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 This is Houston. You are go for staging. Route right. for 10 seconds away from this is S4B. Standby for mode 4 capability. Now this should be the firing of the S4B in just 15 seconds. Mode 4 and Apollo 11 could get into orbit using the service propulsion system. PDQ 602 up here. Altitude is 100 miles. Downrange 883 miles. PDQ 602 and ignition. Good. There it is. Ignition right on top. Right on the top. We're right around. Trust is go, 11. 700 PSI, 697, there we are. And we have a good third stage now. Uh, this burn lasts 2 minutes and 25 seconds, and that brings the vehicle to its orbital speed of 17,500 miles an hour, up a couple of thousand miles an hour from where it was before. Downrange 1,000 miles, altitude 101 miles. D1 is on, no on number 5, if you're okay. This third stage is a J2 engine, develops 225,000 pounds. Houston, at 10 minutes, you are go. But, uh, I think I misidentified the capsule communicator a moment ago. The man uh, who is communicating with the astronauts from the mission control in Houston is Bruce. Houston, predicted cutoff at 11 plus 42, over. 1142, Rich. Downrange 1175 miles, velocity 24,190 miles, feet per second, altitude 102 nautical miles. All right. There is former President Johnson. Advised with a few of his friends in the stands. Apollo 11, this is Houston. You are going to Sharing with Vice President Agnew and the positions of honor here. He's the official representative of Vice Pre uh, of President Nixon. Vice President Agnew uh, is the top uh, official of the administration here. We 
should get confirmation of orbital insertion in about 15 seconds now. Altitude uh, 102.8 nautical miles. Shut down. Shut down right on time. 101.4 by 103.6. Roger, shut down, and we copy 101.4 by 103.6. 101.4 by 103.6, so that would be in nautical miles. So the orbit uh, for the uh, spacecraft uh, has been confirmed. They are in Earth orbit. They've made the first big jump on their trip to land on the moon, and Vice President Agnew was seen there on the screen. That's another good sign when we say the booster is safe. That's quite significant to us. It means that the destruct system has been shut off by a command from the ground. So an S-4B cannot destroy the spacecraft. Uh -huh. if it's, uh, it's designed, of course, if we uh, abort away to, uh, to disperse the propellants in that S-4B. And we have an escape route, of course, with the escape tower and war with burning away from it. It's kind of nice to know it's shut off. At this point, uh, of course, uh, now that they are in Earth orbit, uh, their return it could be a, a, a normal return uh, to a selected landing spot by jettisoning the S-4B third stage and then going on their service propulsion system engine. Just as we were on the Earth orbital flights. Right. The very same thing. So uh, this, this first, uh, always dramatic and... Uh, Obviously, with the great explosive potential of all of that fuel, the dangerous uh, launch phase is passed, and Apollo 11 is on the way. Looking good, over. That's Tom Stafford there. Yes, it is. Yeah, Tom. Uh, Tom, of course, the pilot on uh, the, the commander on Apollo 10, that paved the way for this flight. Uh, with uh, Vice President Agnew and his party. Tom has been kind of the chief briefing officer for the VVVIPs in these <laughs> last couple of days. Uh, See him coming in and out of the uh, hotel there in uh, uh, the Hilton, and he's, uh, he's uh, constantly running off to make some more notes to <laughs> brief another important visitor. I think Tom would probably say V-cubed IP. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, we remarked earlier that it got to that with uh, all of the foreign dignitaries, the congressmen, the cabinet members, the senators, uh, the governors and mayors uh, here. Uh, this is Houston Vanguard LOS at uh, 1535, AOS Canaries at uh, 1630, over. That report is on the LOS. We still have... LOS is the loss of signal from the Vanguard, that's uh, one of the tracking ships out in the Atlantic, uh, to the acquisition of signal in the Canary the Islands. from the instrument unit of the third stage of Saturn V. Here on the ground, we're showing an orbit of 102.5 <laughs> by 99.7 nautical miles. Uh, the flight dynamics officer, Dave Reed, wants to uh, get some radar tracking to refine this orbit. And he will report a uh, refined orbit after more radar tracking. That's very near nominal, uh, didn't it, Wally? 102.5 by 99.7. That's almost 116 miles, uh, uh, statute, statute miles. Yes, high. it is. I think you'll notice the figures differ. It's because the radar data hasn't been smoothed yet. The onboard data is probably more nearly correct at this point. The 101.4, 103.6. It really doesn't, uh, it's not critical at this point, uh, the difference uh, in those of one or two miles in the Earth orbit, uh, as long as they're in approximately the right position over the Pacific on that second orbit to, to fire off the S-4B third stage and boost their speed from 17,500 to 25,000 miles an hour, uh, which will put them on their way to the moon. That moon trajectory speed is uh, uh, just enough to uh, escape uh, enough of the Earth's gravity to get to be captured by the moon's gravity to be brought around the far side of the moon and then with enough 
uh, inertial speed to come back to Earth, but not go into moon orbit, yes. nor be going so fast that you bypass the moon and are not captured by its gravity and go on out to the sun. Which is what the S-4B will do. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. oh, here we are. Yeah, those figures translate uh, the last figures to 118 by 120 statute miles. A little bit higher than uh, they had calculated, I think, but uh, by, by uh, less than a couple of miles and well within range. So we've seen a, another beautiful Saturn launch, but this one will never be known in history or by those of us who watched it as just another Saturn V launch. Not if all goes well, because this is the flight uh, from which man will first set foot on the moon. Uh, we almost glibly toss that line away now, man on the moon. But by golly, just think it over. CBS News color coverage of the launch day of Apollo 11 will continue in a moment.